Hi everyone! We are done with our first quarter, the first half of our first semester. We are about to enter our second quarter and our first topic will be all about your energy resources. As for your review, energy is a capacity to do work. Alam na niyan since junior high school. It composed in various forms such as your thermal, light, kinetic, electrical, chemical, nuclear, and gravitational energy. We don't need to discuss further about this energy kasi po, na-discuss na po natin ito when we were in junior high school. We will focus now on your different energy resources. The energy that we have here in our planet, sa planet Earth po, ay galing po doon sa theory ni Georges de Maitre for the origin of your universe which is your Big Bang. Because of that Big Bang, Maraming nabuo, eventually nabuo po ang ating solar system, and in our solar system mayroong nebula, tatandaan niyo pa ba? Then this nebula nag-spin, keep on spinning, magnagaroon ng gravitational pull, anong nabuo ang ating sun. Now, our energy, one of the main source of energy that we have here in the planet Earth is galing po sa ating sun. Again po, nagsisimula po ang lahat o nanggaling po lahat ng mga energy na meron tayo sa planet Earth dahil po sa Big Bang Theory and at the same time, pagbuo ng ating star na si Sun. The planet Earth contains energy resources and it can be classified into renewable and non-renewable energy resources. The renewable energy resources, these are the sources which can be easily replenished for a short period of time. So, madali lang po siya napapalitan. Once in a consume, pwede siya ma-replenish agad-agad. No? The example of your renewable energy resources for the following. Your solar energy, wind energy, hydroelectric energy, geothermal energy, and your biomass. The second classification of your energy resources is your non-renewable energy resources. These are the sources which takes a long period of time for it to be replenished. So it will take thousands or hundreds or thousands or even millions of years of bago natin mapalitan ang nagamit natin or na-consume natin na energy resources under your non-renewable energy resources. The example for your non-renewable are the following. Your fossil fuels, which are the natural gas, petroleum, and coal. At the same time, your nuclear energy also is an example of your non-renewable energy resources. We have to lessen the dependence of the non-renewable energy resources, specifically your, the use of your fossil fuels, due to issues in global warming and climate change brought about by increasing of your carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. Alam na alam na po natin ito. That is why we have to lessen the use of your fossil fuels. Pero, di ba, napapansin nyo, halos every day we are consuming or using uh, fossil fuels as a source of our energy resources or as a source of our energy sa bahay natin. So today, we are going to focus on your non-renewable energy resources, which are your fossil fuels and your nuclear energy. Your fossil fuels. Ayan. Alam na alam po natin kung ano yung fossil fuels, right? Ito yung mga coal na ginagamit natin, oil, and your natural gas. Alright. Your fossil fuel. Your fossil fuels refers to all deposits of organic materials capable of being burned as fuels. And they can occur in a form of, sabi ko na kanina, yung coal, oil, and your natural gas. Let's talk about first with your coal. Your coal is a carbon-rich deposit formed from dead plant material through the process of coalification. Nabubuo po siya about 300 to 400 million years ago before po mabuo yung mga dead plants natin into a coal. At again, dumadaan siya sa process na tinatawag na qualification. Qualification is the production of different ranks of coal from peat. Nagsisimula lahat sa peat hanggang nabuo ang different ranks of your coal. 
Kasi meron tayong mga ranks of coal or levels of your coal. Kung gaano karami ang carbon na meron sa inyong coal. Kasi po, the amount of energy released when the coal is burned is directly proportional to the amount of carbon within the coal. Kung maraming carbon ang laman ng coal ninyo, therefore, mas maraming energy din po ang ma-release niya na pwede natin gamitin. From the previous slide, you heard that coalification is a production of your different rocks of coal from peat. So, nagsisimula lahat sa peat. Your peat is a precursor to your coal. It consists of your accumulated plant materials in wetlands which are broken down through your peatification. Another process na naman, yung kanina, coalification. This time, it's your peatification. Your petification is the partial decay of your plant debris. Again, this is your partial decay of your plant debris. Again, this is your partial decay of your plant debris. Again, okay? So again, your qualification kanina, production of your coal, the different ranks of your coal, galing sa peat. But before po nabuo ang peat, meron tayong pinatawag na petification wherein nabibreakdown po ang ating plant debris and then it was partially decayed. Now, in your peat class, meron na po itong carbon. When you burn this one, may carbon na ito. So, pwede bang makakuha na ng source and energy? Possible, pero konti lang po. Kasi nga po, konti lang din ang carbon percentage na meron sa peat natin. About 50% of your carbon meron tayo sa peat. Yan, okay? Your peat has a 50% of carbon. So, therefore, when you produce this, uh, when you burn this peat, no, pwede din tayo makaproduce ng about 50% din po na energy Ngayon po ang makukuha natin from your peat Now, let's talk about the rank of your coal From peat po, ayan, ito yung qualification like Start na yung ranking of coals natin sa qualification From your peat, um, uh, the first rank po or the lowest rank of your lignite Lowest, it can be the lowest, but kung nasa drawing po natin ito, nasa pinakaibabaw po siya. Ayan po, kasi po, the more na matagal, the more na mapupunta siya sa pinakailalim ng lupa. At the same time, the more din po na tumataas ang rank ng coal niya. Okay? The first rank of coal is your lignite. Your lignite is the lowest rank of coal. It is brown in color and has an earthy crumble texture. Kita naman po natin sa picture na no? or sa photo natin dyan. That is an example of your lignite. The amount energy released when coal is burned again is directly proportional to the amount of carbon within the coal. So, sir, ilang carbon po meron sa ating lignite? There are 70% of carbon sa lignite po ninyo. Kanina sa peat, 50%. Sa lignite naman po, meron pong 70% of your carbon. The next rank of coal after your, your lignite is your bituminous. Your bituminous is a medium rank coal. Its physical characteristics are generally black, shiny, and hard. Ayan, mas nagmumukhang uling na or coal ang ating uh, bituminous. Sir, ilang porsyento po meron ang carbon? Actually po, halos same lang po sila ng inyong lignite. Meron po siyang 70% of carbon. The next one is your the highest rank or of your coal or the coal rank. That is your anthracite. Your anthracite it is shiny and not all coals reach the anthracite rank because it requires too much heat from very deep burial. And nagkakaroon ng heat and pressure sa ilalim. Nagkakaroon ng masyadong init. Kailangan niya ng masyadong init. Maraming init para makaabot siya sa rank na anthracite. Dira lang po kasi mostly hindi pa siya nabuo ng anthracite. Nasa ano pa po tayo, bituminous. Ayun po, naka-harvest na siya. Minimina na agad para gawing, uh, para i-burn and to produce energy. Now, your anthracite, since it is the highest coal rank, no, among the three different ranks of coal, your carbon percentage of your anthracite is about 95%. There is 95, there are 95% of carbon na nasa loob po ng inyong isang anthracite na coal. The next type of your fossil fuel is your oil. Your oil is also known as your petroleum. 
Its color is black, it is thick, and mushy liquid found between rock layers. Ayan po. Nakikita po natin siya sa mga spaces between your rocks sa ilalim po. And again, that is your oil. As you can see in your screen, meron tayong tinatawag na pump or well. Ayan po. So, a well is dug to obtain your oil. And then to bring it to the surface, the oil needs to be pumped. Yan po yung example ng ating uh, well and pump na para ma-extract po ang ating oil sa ilalim ng lupa. Then, it is transported in pipelines and huge tanker ships. Tapos ang ginagawa po nila, a refinery transforms the oil into products no, na ginagamit na natin. Such as your gasoline, your jet fuel, and your diesel fuel. So before po natin nagagamit yung oil na na-extract po, kailangan pa siyang uh, uh, mag-undergo pa siya ng process para magamit na or ready to use na siya. And these products are your gasoline, your jet fuel, and your diesel fuel. The last and the third type of your fossil fuels is your natural gas. The natural gas is formed deep within the earth and it is made up of your methane. Your methane is a light hydrocarbon and flammable. No? It is colorless and odorless. No? Ang totoo po, ang natural gas natin, methane, it is colorless and odorless. Pero sir, bakit yun may amoy? Sabi nila may amoy. O nga sir, na-experience ko yun po na may amoy siya. No, ang ginagawa po kasi, pag once na ready to use na ito, they add chemical, no? Chemical is mixed to make it smelly. Bakit po? Para malaman po natin na may leakage pa o wala. Ayan. No? Kasi po, if hindi natin alam na may leakage, hindi natin na-amoy na, ha, hindi ba kung ano? So, hindi ito makabalok, no? Mubuto ragalit na yun yung kusina, no? Nana. So, they add chemicals para po mas may amoy siya and easily to identify it in case po na may mga leakage. Now, your natural gas is the cleanest among the, uh, among the fossil fuels. And po, sa lahat ng fossil fuels natin, this is the cleanest and it, and it emits less uh, harmful by products. Pero, no, even if it is not as clean as other renewable resources like your wind energy and solar energy, many still prefer, uh, prefer to use your natural gas because of its abundance, low cost, and ease of utilization. Mas madaling gamitin, kaya nga po gumagamit ay mga shilling, shilling dyan. Di ba nag-mention pa ng products sa set? Set na po. Ayan, mga gasol na po, no, sa ito mga kitchen pag pangluto. Mas easy talaga siya gamitin. Ayan po. Let's talk about your fossil fuel consumption. Now, in 2013, 61.25% of the total country energy consumption po napupunta lahat sa fossil fuel natin. No? I mean, fossil fuel ang gamit natin. 61.25% sa lahat ng energy consumption ng Pilipinas ng 2013 ay galing sa fossil fuel. Napakarami po ba? Opo. So, power plants in the Philippines. Meron tayong mga power plants dito sa Philippines for in ang ginagamit nila is puro coals and diesels. No? No. Is it part of your fossil fuel? Opo, kasama yan sa fossil fuel, your coal. Yung coal niya kanina. The specific type of your oil naman is your diesel. Now, we are using coal and diesel to, to produce energy sa mga different power plants in the Philippines. Now, napakarami pong power plant po dito sa Pilipinas where are using fossil fuel. Example, in Luzon, some of the power plants that depend on coal and diesel as fuel include your Masinlok Power Partners, your Angeles Power Incorporated, and your Tarlac Power Corporation. Sa Visayas naman po, meron tayong tinatawag na Visayas Grid, your Cebu Energy Development Corporation, your Cebu Private Power, and Salcon Philippines are just some of plants na mga power plants that rely on fossil fuels. Actually, class, nakapunta ako doon sa Cebu last January and doon kami pumunta sa Naga City. That city, meron po silang dalawang coal plant. Ayan po, dalawa talaga mismo coal plant meron sila. Ayan po, they're using fossil fuel. And then, dalawang plant, tapat talaga. Uh, upon entry and upon exit also ng inyo or sa other end naman ng other side ng, ng city. Nandun yung another one na power plant nila. In Mindanao, plants like Katabata Light, your Davao Light, Western Mindanao Power Corporation, and Mapala Power Corporation, they all rely on diesel as your fuel. 
magamit nila diesel as fuel to uh, to generate energy. The next non-renewable energy resources that we are going to discuss is your nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is an alternative source of energy that comes from the nuclei of an atom. It occurs in two ways, then your fission and your fusion. And your nuclear energy po, mas common po, actually ang ginagamit po talaga natin is your fission technique. But you can also produce energy using your fusion. Ayan po. Are you familiar with this fusion and fusion? Siguro familiar lang sa inyo is yung fusion sa mga fan ng Dragon Ball Z. Ayan. Naabutan niyo pa ba yung Dragon Ball? Familiar pa ba kayo sa dra Dragon Ball? Di ba may ginagawa silang fusion technique? Ayan, o. Oh, ito yung ginagawa nila. Di ba? May fusion technique. Mga inkana, magdikit-dikit, tapos mag-combine ang ilang power may ito sa isang tao. Kasi when you say fusion, combination. O, sinabing fusion, fusion, nag-separate or nag-split. Pero ito sa image natin na nakikita po natin sa Dragon Ball, fusion po ang tawag natin dyan. Fusion. Let's start with your fusion. It is a splitting of your heavy atoms into lighter atoms. Most nuclear energy is produced by this process. Ito po yung mas kinaka-common. Mas madali po kasing gawin. Ito yung ginagawa po, a heavy atom is inahati siya or split into a lighter atom. Kasi po, as these atoms po na split into lighter atom, pag split pa lang niya, pag hiwalay niya, it will release energy na na pwede na po natin gamitin. No? Na pwede natin i- uh, gamitin pang generate ng kuryente or energy. Now, it occurs when an atom is hit by a neutron, causing it to release heat and fragments that form new and lighter elements and ejects neutron from the nucleus. And then this neutron na naman na na-eject na will go to another um, heavy na atoms and then ang gagawin na naman niya, babanggain na naman niya tapos mag-split naman ito to then mag-release na naman ng heat so, yung heat na ito, pwede natin gamitin to generate energy. For your fusion naman po, this is a combination of two light atoms to form a heavier atom. Opposite po ang nangyayari. Pero bira lang po ito ginagawa kasi po, even yun ng mga laboratories po natin, bira din po nila ito ginagawa kasi napakahirap. Ano po, ano po reason, sir? Because it will uh, require you a very high temperature, no? Sobrang init pa na temperature. So, there's no such plant na kaya pa na mag-produce ng ganun ka init para i-glue or i-dikit nimo ang guwaka light element to form a heavier atom. So, sa mga laboratories lang po ito, nagagawa ang fusion. Now, this time, we are going to play a video. No? Uh, I downloaded this one from YouTube para mas madaling maintindihan po ang fusion and fusion ng nuclear energy. After the, the video na may pakita ni Sir, susunod na naman po ang trivia video galing sa NAS Daily. And po, uh, share siya about nuclear energy. So, how safe na siya ngayon and how efficient po ang inyong nuclear energy. So, I hope you'll enjoy the video. And then, by the end of the NAS Daily video, yung second video natin, that will be the last part of our lesson for today. So, sa ngayon pala po, magbabay na kudaan. And we will end the video after the second video presentation and present is served. Okay? So, ayan. Sa mukha sa ginastorya ni Sarai, nang balik-balik na ito. Klaro na to. I will end this uh, video lecture already. Tapos susunod na po ang dalawang videos na ibibigay ni Sir about your nuclear energy. So, on the next meeting, during our synchronous lesson, our lecture, we're going to discuss about your renewable energy resources. Maraming salamat po! surface.
The concepts of fusion and fission have been considered for hundreds of years. In the past, it was called alchemy. But the goal here isn't to turn a chunk of lead into gold. Fusion and fission will build up or break down the nucleus of an atom. Fusion is when two or more nuclei combine to create a nucleus of greater mass. All elements exist because fusion from hydrogen atoms created larger atoms up through lead. Stars are powered by fusion, creating helium and other elements, and supernovas create the heavier elements. Fusion requires very, very high temperatures in order to occur. We're talking over 40 million degrees Celsius. This is what's happening in our sun, so the high temperatures make sense. Let's look at a reaction that occurs in the sun. Deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen with one neutron, and tritium is an isotope of hydrogen with two neutrons. When they collide under high temperature conditions, they form a helium atom with two protons and two neutrons. They release a neutron, written with the lowercase n for the symbol, and they release a huge amount of energy. Now, it would be amazing if we could harness this massive release of energy to feed our need for electrical energy, but we run into two problems with fusion. Fusion requires temperatures that are very high and very difficult to attain, and the reaction itself is nearly impossible to control. To get the high temperatures to start the reaction, we need something like a nuclear bomb, and once that's going, good luck trying to control it. Fission is, in a small part, the opposite of fusion. It's the splitting of a nucleus into smaller fragments by the release of neutrons and lots of energy. But nuclear fission will only happen when neutrons hit one of two fissionable isotopes, uranium-235 or plutonium-239. First, a neutron hits uranium-235, which makes it so unstable it breaks into two smaller parts and also releases three neutrons. If these neutrons hit other uranium-235 atoms, it can start a chain reaction. A chain reaction is where fission releases neutrons, which hit other fissionable atoms, producing more neutrons, which can react with even more fissionable atoms, and so on and so forth. We can harness the energy released from fission much more easily than harnessing fusion's energy. Nuclear reactors are the heart and soul of nuclear power plants. We use controlled fission in fuel rods that are cooled by a coolant fluid, usually water. The heat from the core is used to generate steam, which will drive a turbine that creates electricity in a generator. The large towers that you may be used to seeing are actually just for cooling down and condensing the water so that it can be reused in the system. There's no radioactive material in those cooling towers, just steam. The fuel rods are made of a metal which contains uranium-235 or plutonium-239. When the fuel rod is low in fissionable atoms, it's considered to be spent, used up. Spent fuel rods are still radioactive, so they must be placed underwater in holding tanks to cool them down, and the water also acts as a shield to reduce radiation levels. The rods glow blue because of Sharonkov radiation. The rods can also be stored here for many years, and may later be recycled or moved to a more permanent storage location. Now, perhaps most notoriously, fission and fusion can be used in nuclear weapons. The fission bomb, also known as the atom bomb, includes weapons whose explosive output is exclusively from fission reactions. Many fission bombs have been dropped to test and study their power and nuclear fallout, which is the radioactive contamination that's left in its wake. Only two fission bombs have been used in warfare, and thankfully, None have been used since. Thermonuclear bombs are weapons that use fission to trigger fusion reactions with tritium, deuterium, or lithium deuteride. In order to get the fusion reaction started, a fission reaction must occur first to create the high temperatures that are needed. The fusion reaction doesn't create nuclear fallout, but the fission reaction does. Thermonuclear bombs are the most powerful and potentially destructive nuclear weapon. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Science Pet. Hey, what I'm about to show you is worth your time because I'm flying to a place that you have never seen before. I'm flying to a nuclear power plant and it's the newest one in the world. Why? 
here is why. When you look at the energy we use, a lot of it is not good for the planet. A lot of our energy comes from oil and coal. And we all know this is not sustainable. So what do we do? The answer to that I found in the Middle East, the birthplace of oil. Here in the Emirates, this country is home to 10% of the world's oil. But to make their energy cleaner, they did something crazy. They built nukes. Not the nukes for war, but the nukes for peace. See, nuclear energy is amazing. From this small uranium piece, you can replace 500 liters of oil and one ton of coal. From one piece, you can power a house for four months. And that is why the Emirates built the world's newest nuclear energy plant. It's so big, it can power 25% of the country without any carbon emissions. And it's 100% safe. Forget everything you heard about nuclear energy and forget Hollywood drama. According to science, nuclear energy is 250 times safer than big oil fields. The reactor is very small and all these big buildings around it are designed for safety. The walls are 1.2 meters thick and every operation is tested 25,000 times. Because this is the newest power plant in the world, it's also the safest. Bye-bye oil. And it's not just nuclear energy, it's also solar energy. Here, they have 3.2 million solar panels to create clean energy. It's the biggest standalone solar plant in the world. These shields are cleaned every day without using a single drop of water. And from this, they can supply 90,000 people with 100% clean energy. Forget oil. From wind to solar to nuclear, the future is going to be clean. The Stone Age did not end because we ran out of stone. It ended because of progress. And the Oil Age will not end because we run out of oil. It will end because of progress. Because now there is hope that one day our grandkids will not need oil. And that should make everyone happy. See you next week.